Okay, today we're going to do permutations and probability, and we're going to be talking about what that permutations mean, and we're going to also do something called a factorial, but which looks like an exclamation mark. Yeah. It, it is an exclamation mark in English, but in math it's called a factorial. Okay. Oh. All right, so we'll get started. All right, so a permutation, excuse me, a permutation is an ordered arrangement of objects. Permutations are useful when counting the ways that something can be done. Often a permutation uses all the available options. And let's do an example. So we have six books laying on a table. How many different ways can the books be arranged on the shelf? And so sometimes it's easier. You just take these six books. You just play around with them for a little bit. Yeah. Eventually, you're going to come up with an idea, oh, there's a mathematical way to decide this instead of you just playing with the books. So at first, what we're going to do is we have these books, and we're going to just play for a minute so you can get the idea how this works. Okay. So, and I'm not going to draw the squares every time, but we could order them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to do this in an orderly way. I'm going to always put 1 next. I'm going to put 2 in the back, okay? So we could do this 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 2. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. And we could do this one, and we can put three now at the end, okay? So we can do one, four, five, six, two, three, okay? Oh, wow, there's a bunch of ways to do there's this. There's going to be a bunch of ways to do this. And I can do um, one with the, um, I can put the four now at the end, and I can do five, six, two, three, four. Are you with me so far? Yeah. And then we can put the five at the end, and we'll have one, six, two, three, four, five. And then we can put, we can't put the six at the end because then we'll have the same thing we have here, right? Right. We can keep doing this and playing around. This is permutations. This is the way that something can be arranged, the different ways that it can be arranged, okay? And so um, there are six choices for the first book. So I've only done, and this is in all the combinations because we could have moved these things around and did them in different orders, right? right? yeah. But there are six, uh, that, and so I have... Um, the number one in front, then I could then I have to do all of them for the number two in front, then all of them for the number three in front, all of them for the four, five, six, seven. So I can have there are six choices for the first book on the shelf, okay, and so then there are five choices for the second book, four choices for the third book, and so on. Do you understand why there's only five choices for the next one? I think so. So if I have a one in front. There's only five more numbers left to okay. arrange for the next, for the second book, right? Does that make sense? Uh -huh. and, a, and after I put, just like after I put the three here, there's only four more numbers to choose from. And after I put the four there, there was only three. So does that make sense? Yes. So there's only one, once I pick the number in the, for the first position, there's only five numbers to choose from for the second okay. position. And then there's only four numbers to choose for the second position and so on. Does that okay. make sense? Yes. Okay. So all together, they've decided to do it mathematically instead of us figuring all this out. There are, the first number only has six numbers, six possibilities. Once I put those in there, there's going to be five possibilities, then four, then three, then two, then one, and I multiply those together. That's 720 when we put it in our calculator, okay? And so we're going to now get into the word factorial. That's when I take... The, the, we, we, what we did right here was six factorial. That means we took six times five, four, three, two, one. Ah. Oh. For example, seven factorial will mean seven times six times five times four times three times two. You really don't have to multiply by the one because one times anything is itself. But then that's that is seven factorial. Okay, and this comes out when we're doing permutations. Oh. Okay. okay. And so. Um, So this also here, will, it says, sometimes a permutation uses only some of the available objects. So let's look at the next example. Now we have, suppose the state license plates begins with three letters. How many sets of three different letters can be used to begin the license plate? Now, how many letters are in the alphabet? 26. But we're only going to pick three of them. Oh, boy. <laughs> so that's a little bit different. So um, on the... With the first time, we have th three numbers that we're going to take here, right? Letters, excuse me. After I pick one of them, how many do I have to choose from after that? 25. Okay. 
And then after I do that one, I only have 24, right? So this is not, it's not going to be a factorial. We're not going to do 26 factorial because we're not going to go all the way down to right. 1. We're only going to do 26, then 25, then 24. We'll get our calculator out, and we'll do it all down, and we'll find out there are 15,000. Oh, boy. 600. 600 different options for us for license plates. Wow. If I use just three of them. Could you imagine what would happen if I decided to use four? <laughs> if I did one more, I'd have oh. then, then I'd take that number times 23. Wow, that yeah. would be huge. And so this, this comes into play. I, I've often sit and wondered, are phone numbers? Yes. Uh, with, that that many phone, with that many options of numbers, we've got... And then they have the area codes, and they have the, and then they have to put a one in front, and all that different yeah. things. The different possibility of phone numbers, and with me, and they actually, I think, if I understood right, they started to run out with the number of people having multiple phones. Could you have a cell phone and a home phone? Yeah. And, and now multiple people in your home is not. When I was a kid, only you had a home phone at your house. Every house had a phone. Well, now every person in the house has a phone, so it's a totally different story. Yeah. So um, let's do this next one. The national flag of Ireland has three equal vertical stripes, green, white, and orange. We're going to just do this green, white, and orange, just for my own visualization here. Okay. The national flag of France, oh, this was Ireland, by the way. Okay. The national flag of France has three equal vertical stripes. This was France. It has blue, white, and red. Okay. How many different flags of equal vertical stripes could be made from the colors of these two flags? So we would do four, three, two. So we, we have white in both four, of them, three, don't we? Two, do we have white in both of them? Uh-huh. Okay, so how many possibilities of colors do we have? Oh, we have four. Aside from the white. Okay, and but white will only count once. So we really have five, right? Because oh, we can have okay. a we can have a flag with green. White, green, white, orange, blue, and red, right? Okay. And then yeah. how many stripes did they say that we wanted? How many different flags of equal vertical stripes? Are they only going to have three of them? Apparently they're only having three stripes, just like these. So we have, just like we did back here, we're going to have, there were 26 letters to choose from, but we're only going to pick three of them. Here we have five colors to choose from, but we're only picking three of them. Okay. So how what are we going to multiply here? We're going to multiply like five, four, three? Yes. That'll be 12. Excuse me, that'll be 20. Times three is 60. Yes, so there will be 60 different flags that we could do. Okay. Okay, and you'll probably want to say 60 flags. So we'll know. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So the math part of this is is not the difficult yeah. part. It's what we're trying to figure out what we're supposed to math multiply together. Right. Okay. So here is our next problem. If six books each have a different author, what is the probability they could be arranged in alphabetical order if no attention is paid to the author's name? Okay. So what it means by well, here we ha the question was. Um, what is the probability they will be arranged in alphabetic order if no attention is paid to the author's name? That means you um, put them in a box. We're not going to look at the author's name. We're just going to pick them out of a box. And what's the probability we can get them in alphabetical order? So when we pick the first book, if that's one of the we have one out of sixth probability that it will be the first one in... in all right? Right. Then we'll have... Five, five left, left in there, so, so we'll have one fifth, and one then we'll have fourth. one fourth. Now, the way to write this quickly would be one over six factorial. Oh, Makes sense? right, yeah. So, which is the same as one over six times five times four times three times two times one. And we get a calculator out if we wanted to. That would be 30, and that's so six. So, equal 720. Yeah. We, we did this before, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. One over... It's only a 170, 120. That's not a very good chance that we could get them in alphabetical no. order <laughs> by just randomly picking them out. Okay. No. Which is only, if we did that on our calculator, 14%. Percent. That's after we move the decimal 
over. Because look at that. Yeah. That's terrible. Bad pun. Okay. So, um, your numbers one, two, and three, it has stars next to them, but we're going to do them anyway because these are hard. <laughs> okay. It just We just have to think about how they're done. And um, apparently when they say something like, no attention is paid to, that means you're going to pull them out of a box and not look at them. You're going to like close your eyes and not pay attention to their names. Okay? Okay. All right? I think we're done. Yeah.